الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب continuing on in our study of the abridged uh, the abridged uh, version or abridged or concise summary of Shara Sunnah by Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala I came upon some fawaid or some benefits from Alama Rabi' bin Hadi Amir al-Madkhali Hafadhullah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh from Ahlul Sunnah Ma'roof. And the Shaykh brought some very concise benefits here. And we already mentioned what Shaykh Alama Ahmed al-Najmi, Rahmatullah Ali, what he mentioned. Uh, about this ibarah, this statement of Imam Baba Hari, and we'll briefly go over what Sheikh Rabi' uh, what he mentioned in regards to this. قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى فمن السنة لزوم الجماع فمن رغب غير الجماع وفارقها فقد خلى ربكة الإسلام من عنقه وكان ضال مذلة. Uh, Imam Baba Hari رحمه الله he said whoever uh, or from the Sunnah. So again, now he's given us some of the details. So he began his treatise uh, showing us that Islam and the Sunnah are the same. They require one another. They're part of one another. That Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And then he began to come with some of the tafsil, some of the details. And so the ulama, they refer to this as uh, the mentioning the am, the general, and then coming into the khas. And there's a specific qaida, I can't remember uh, exactly how you, you, you uh, say it in Arabic, but basically what it means is that the ulama, in a lot of the texts, you'll find this in the Qur'an, it's from uh, Sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the Qur'an, that a lot of times you'll have... Uh, uh, general verses, and then they're explained by, uh, then you'll come with more details, or the Sunnah will explain the Quran in more details, or you'll find some text and they explain other text. And even uh, in regards to this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Ali Imran, uh, in Surah Al Ali Imran, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, about uh, the verses in the Quran. He says, after Alif Lam Mim, Thalik, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Allahu La Ilaha Illahu Al Hayyu Al Qayyum, Nazal Alayka Al Kitab Bil Haqqi Musaddaqan Lima Bayna Yaday, Wanzal Al Tawrat Wal Injil, Min Qabla Al Hudin Lil Nas, Wanzal Al Furqan, Inna Al Ladina Kafru Bi Ayat Illahi Lahum Adab Al Shadid, Wallahu Aziz Al Intiqam, Inna Allah La Yakhfa Alayhi Shayun Fil Ardi Wala Fil Sama, Hu Al Ladi Yisawrakum Fil Arham Kayfa Yishaa Ula Ilaha Lahu Al Aziz Al Hakim, Hu Al Ladi Anzal Alayka الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هنم الكتاب وخر متشابهات. so Allah subhanahu wa taala says في كتاب الكريم especially the the shahid we reached the ayat that I was uh, trying to remember and Allah subhanahu wa taala says uh, that from the Quran uh, uh, speaking about the Quran منه آيات محكمات هنم الكتاب وخر متشابه that there are verses that are clear in the Quran and that's the Umm al-Kitab. وَأُخْرَ مُتَشَابِهَا And the other verses are the ones that are uh, maybe not clear to all of the people. So they might bring about some ambiguity. They might not be clear or that the people possibly will come up with more than one meaning. Or the, that the, the verses uh, uh, are the meaning is not as apparent and is known to those people of knowledge who are going to depth into these uh, areas and know the Quran, know the Arabic language, and know the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Tafsir, and so forth. So, letting us know that sometimes uh, that uh, some of the text that they require other texts to uh, to gain the the complete meaning or to gain the true understanding and wisdom 
and the details regarding that act of worship, regarding those, that, those manners, or the, that ahkam. And so, moving back to what we were discussing, so Imam Baba Hari, he said, فَمِنَ السُنَّةِ لُزُومِ الْجَمَعَةِ And so it is from the sunnah. So this is now he's, he's specifying from the general, he was talking about the sunnah and how it is part of Islam. And now he's giving us the details. فَمِنَ السُنَّةِ From the sunnah is that you adhere to the jama'ah, the main body of Muslims. And we already described that in Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, Rahmatullahi mentioned many uh, fawaid for us. فَمَنْ رَغَبَ غَيْرَ الْجَمَعَةِ Whoever desires other than the jama'ah, and divides them. Then they have taken uh, away the, uh, removed the collar of Islam from their neck, and they are misguided, and they misguide others. So, Shaykh Rabi Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned a sunnah am. He said the sunnah is general. لِأَنَّهَا تَشْمِلْ عَقَاعِدْ وَالْمِنْهَجْ وَالْعَمَلْ وَمِنْ مُضَامِينَهَا لُزُومِ الْجَمَاعِ المسلمين بعد تمسك بالأقاعد والمناهج والعمل فلو قام بهذه الأسس وفارك الجماعة وهم أهل الحق عقيرة ومنهج وعمل واجتماع عليها فقد ارتكب أمر خطير وبدعة عظيمة. So the Sheikh said here, حفظ الله تعالى. He said the Sunnah is general, and he said, and this is because. It includes, and this is what we mentioned prior in, in some of our other, uh, the, the other sittings we had. He said, Because it includes aqeed, it includes creed. This is why we say Shar uh, Sunnah and we translate it as the creed. Because it includes the Sunnah. This is a very big part of, in this book, it, it deals a lot with creed. And menhaj, and methodology, and amal, and uh, uh, acts of uh, worship. You know, ibadah and deeds, doing deeds, good deeds, and, and deeds that are uh, related to mu'amalat, like fiqh mu'amalat and fiqh ibadat, you know, talks about salat, it talks about mas'ala khufain, it talks about many acts, uh, and all of these things are included in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So this is the sunnah am, and this is how a lot of the salaf, they referred to the sunnah as meaning everything in Islam. It, didn't, it wasn't restricted to, to now, the later generations, that a lot of the scholars, they refer to the sunnah is those acts of ibadat that are mustahab. Those acts in fiqh, which are mustahab, the mustahabat. Things like, uh, you know, praying extra salat, or the extra uh, sadaqa, tatawwa, uh, salat tatawwa, Soma uh, Tatawa, you know, extra fasting that is not an obligation upon you. Nowadays, the Muta'akhirin, the later scholars, especially in scholars in jurisprudence, they refer to something as Sunnah. Generally, what they mean by that, which is, differs with how the Salaf used to describe the term Sunnah, is they refer to those things which are Mustahab. And that's why a lot of people say, wait a minute, I think I'm going to pray my Sunnahs first, and, and so forth. Because this is how we refer to the sunnah now. We don't refer to it as being all-inclusive as the Salaf used to do. So then he said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, and from that, and what's included in all of that, is the uh, importance of adhering to the main body of Muslims and adhering strongly to it, to, to the aqidah, to the creed, to the manahij, to the uh, to the uh, methodology or methodologies, and the amal and the deeds, you know, and the acts of worship, the acts of ibadah and the akam related to that. So, if uh, a person uh, does this and adheres to that foundation or those foundations, uh and they divide the jama'ah. So, if a person, they adhere to all of those things, those aspects of the sunnah. And then they divide the jama'ah, or separate themselves from the main body of Muslims. وَهُمْ أَهْلَ حَقْ عَقِيدَةٍ وَمَنْهَجٍ وَعَمَلٍ وَإِجْتِمَاعٍ عَلَيْهَا and meaning that the general people, that they are the people of the truth. 
and if and that they are the people of Aqidah, of creed, and the people of Minhaj, and Amal, you know, and, and doing deeds, and the people of coming together, Ijtima'in, that they come together on Kitab wa Sunnah. Then the person who divides from them, they have fallen into a very dangerous and serious issue and bid'a azima in a very serious innovation. And then they enter or they fall under the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever uh, desires other than my sunnah is not from me. So then they, the person who divides from the jama'at, they fall into this statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's sufficient for a, a person in evil. You know, that's enough evil for them to have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, saying he is removed from them or he is free from them. That shows you how serious that and dangerous that is. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made to yatabarra minhum. You know that the Prophet والسلام, he freed himself from those people who divide the jama'ah. And, and the Shaykh is saying that this is a serious enough sin, that's sufficient enough evil to, to, to be in a serious dangerous path that, that, that you're heading towards a path of destruction. And then he said, وَيُرْخُ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And then this person also enters into the statement of Allah the Almighty where he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينُهُمْ وَكَانَ شِيعًا لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ إِنَّمَا أَمَرُهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّيَكُمْ يُنَبِّيَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ in Surah Al-An'am uh, verse 159 He says subhanahu wa ta'ala Verily those who divide uh, divide into groups or parties between themselves that uh, they, 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 they have nothing with them. You know, that they're, 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 you know, they've divided, divided into sectarianism. Verily, their affairs are with Allah. So they don't have anything with them, that no value. And their affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا أَمَرُهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّيَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ And then Allah on the day of judgment is going to tell them and make it known to them what they used to do. The fact that they divided, they, the fact that they entered into Hizbiya, they divided the Jama'ah al Muslimin, they divided into groups, they said, we're gonna call ourselves this group, we're this Jama'ah, we're this uh, brotherhood, we're this uh, you know, group of individuals, and dividing themselves from the main body of Muslims, this is a very dangerous and serious sin. But rather, we're ordered to adhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah. To follow the Minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. That's what we're ordered to do. That's what we're ordered to do. That doesn't mean it's not permissible to call yourself Salafi. That's not what we're saying. Or to say that you're from Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah. No, that's perfectly permissible because these are some of the names that are Mishroor. These are the names that we have a Dilla. We have evidence from the Quran and evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and evidence from the Salaf of this Ummah to support these Al Qab, these names. These names are derived from evidence. These names are not taken just from a Jama'ah. We don't call ourselves Jama'at al Ahbash. We don't call ourselves the group of the, the Hab Habish or Habishis, uh, the group of Abdullah Harari. We don't call ourselves this. We don't call ourselves the, um, uh, all these other false names that people attribute. Even to Ahl Sunnah, they slander them. They say they're Wahhabi. No one, I don't know anyone who calls himself Wahhabi. And Ahl Sunnah is not Wahhabi. We follow Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah and Muhammad ibn the Wahhab. Rahmatullah was a great imam, a mujahid, a mujaddid, who revived the calls of Kitab wa Sunnah in his time, in his place, and that is something azim, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and have mercy upon him uh, for this. But we don't say necessarily we're followers of him, or that it refers to his minhaj. No, it's minhaj, it's Kitab wa Sunnah. The Salaf of this Ummah. Any mistakes that he had, we don't follow those mistakes. Any mistakes that any Imam has, we don't follow them. But we follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what we're ordered to do. 
أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول. Follow Allah, follow the Messenger, عليه الصلاة والسلام. Then the Sheikh said, uh, and in reference to the ayat we just mentioned, he said, فبرع الله ورسول ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم من المفرقين للأمة والدين. That Allah and His Messenger both uh, freed themselves from those people who divide the, 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 the main body of Muslims and divide, they divide the ummah, they divide the community and they divide the religion into different parts. Okay, we're going to focus only on khuruj fi sibilillah, meaning going to, uh, you know, call people to the prayer. But we don't call them to aqidah. We don't try to emir uh, bi maruf and ayin munkar. We leave all these other things. We, we, only, we don't talk about knowledge really except for in a very vague and general way. We don't encourage the people to go at al ilm. But instead, we restrict ourselves to calling the ummah back to salat. So no, that is not. We can't make a jama'ah based on that. But our minhaj should be complete what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ordered us with. And it should always begin that call. In whatever form, whatever act of ibadah is being manifested, it needs to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have ikhlas wa uh, mutaba. It needs to follow, have sincerity to Allah and be strictly worshipped to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did he begin his call? How did he continue his call? His call was to Tawheed, it was to the oneness of Allah. Because he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with this message and realized the importance of this message that was important to him, that he must articulate that message properly, and that was based on Tawheed. The message itself was Tawheed. In them, and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala to the people of Yemen, he said, in the kitati komi min ahl kitab. Verily, you're going to go to a people from ahl kitab. For you kun awlama tadumile shahad shahad in la ilaha illallah. And the first thing that you should call them to is to bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship. To to worship Allah alone, Tawheed. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in the hadith of also the hadith of uh, Mu'adh when he was riding the donkey with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqq Allah al-ibadi wa ma haqq al-ibadi ala Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'adh, do you know the right of uh, Allah uh, upon a slave and the right of the slave upon Allah? And then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, Haqq Allah al-ibadi ya abuduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa aqli ibadi ya Allah la yu'adhaba man la yushriku bi shayin. The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying that the right of Allah over his servants is that uh, that they worship him alone. That the servant, the slave, worships him alone. That's Tawheed. Tawheed al-Ibadah. Wa ibadah al-Allah. And the right of the slave over their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he will not punish them if they worship him and him alone. May Allah bless us to be of those who haqqaq a tawheed, I mean. So that's our call. We don't call to like jamaat al-jihad, jamaat al-takfir wa hijra. Those people, they take a specific portion of the deen. And most of the time, with, a, 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 with great misunderstanding and great deviation from what Islam truly is. They, they understand from their intellect, their limited intellect, they go into the ayats, the same verses that we read. Sometimes they even go to the books of the Salaf like we do. But their understanding, then they go off and, and go off to their understanding of how to practice that. And they make their own fatawa. They have their own so-called scholars, scholars of Dalal. Most of them young in age, most of the time anyhow. Not even uh, offering much to the ummah except falsehood and Dalal and misguidance and death and destruction. So... That extremism and all those other manahij, all those other forms of aqidah, they are forms, they're different deans in fact, because they emphasize one aspect of the religion and then they go to Jawz al Had even with that. They've almost made like a new religion because we say, no, terrorism is horrible. Terrorism, terrorism in a Muslim or non-Muslim society, we don't accept it. We don't accept killing innocent people. We're not pleased with these evil actions. We're not pleased with destruction of property and wealth and kidnapping and killing and cutting throats. We're not pleased with this. But they say, no, that's going to bring us closer to Allah. 
No, no. We have a hadith. We have an ayat. And we're going to understand it like this, that we can blow ourselves up and that's going to get us to paradise. A'udhu billah. Where do they come up with this? Dalal. That's because they're not going back to the Shara Sunnah. They're not going back to this usus, this, this thing, that it's complete. A sunnah am. The sunnah is general. And it includes It includes all of those things. Aqidah, creed. Uh, your menhaj, your methodology in da'wah. Very important. And your amal, your deeds, your ahkam. And your righteous deeds, how you, how you interact with other people. So this shows us that the only minhaj we have that we can accept is a minhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. As Shaykh Anna Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Yarhamahullah, Rahmatul Alayhi said, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, he had da'wah to Ila Kitabillah, min Kitabillah. وَإِلَى سُنْ وَمِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَى سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ That the da'wah of Ahl sunnah it is the propagation from the Qur'an, from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. So we're calling to the Qur'an, we're not calling, I don't care if you listen to me. Listen to me if you find some benefits you're going to practice and it helps you in your life. Walhamdulillah. I'm trying to do something good bi'idnillah from my soul. We don't call to ourselves. We don't call to our, our group and our clique. And this is hard because all of us get tainted by uh, the lack of sincerity. Shaitan's going to come to you. Shaitan's always going to ride on you. He's going to ride you and try to deviate you. Wa'iyadhan billah. May Allah protect us. But as we, we said, so the Shaykh said, it's the propagation from the Quran to the Quran. And from the sunnah to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the da'wah to Ahl sunnah This is the minhaj al-haq. This is what we have to adhere to. This is what we find uh, in the statements of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa khulafa rashidin al mahdiin It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of rightly guided predecessors. predecessors. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Men raghiba an sunnati wa laysa minni. Whoever desires other than my sunnah is not from me. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Kullaha fi nara al wahda." Qalu man hi ya Rasulullah. Qala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi washabi. That which is what I'm upon and what my sahab, my companions are upon. Radi Allah taala anhu majmain. That's the sunnah. That's the minhaj. That's the methodology that we have to adhere to. And when we're incorrect, may Allah bless us. To be corrected. You know, we have to correct each other, advise each other. If you hear a mistake from me, please advise me. Please gu please uh, advise me and pray for my guidance. Because nobody wants to go to hell. No one wants to be on the, the, the crooked path. No one wants to call people to the law. We want to call people to guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with a class with the bat. Then the Shaykh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, Fainal ijtima al Muslimin al Haq min a'dham wa qawwamat al deen wa yurkhu fi qawlihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ra'a min amirihi shayin yakrahuhu fal yasbir fa innuhu min farak al jama'a shabran fa mata fa maytatin jahiriya. The Shaykh then mentioned, he said that the, the Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they freed themselves from the people who split the ummah. And that these people fall under the statement of the Prophet ﷺ where he said that whoever uh, sees from their imam or their emir, their leader, something that they dislike, then be patient. The Prophet ﷺ orders to be patient. For verily, the one who divides the jama'ah, divides the main body of Muslims, even a hand span will die the death of the, of the, de of the death of Jahiliyyah. So that's a, a, a very severe uh, warning and showing us it's a serious punishment and that we should avoid dividing the Muslims. That's, this is very, that's a very serious thing. So always think about whatever you're calling to, whatever you're adhering to, is it that which unites the Muslims based on Kitab or Sunnah? And the understanding of the salaf of this ummah? Or is it something that uh, is with a, a particular clique, particular group, 
uh, we're emphasizing one aspect of the deen and we've left the rest of the deen. We're calling to ourselves. Because all of those things lead to tafarraq, lead to dividing. If you're calling, for example, you're telling the people to make khuruj and you, you have your specific, specific program as Jama'at Tablik does. In fact, they divide themselves from the rest of the ummah. Although they invite everyone, they invite everyone to come to their program. Do it our way. 40 days, like we said, the emir said this, you got to do it like this, you got to give a bayan, and your bayan is like this. Okay? So they have a minhaj, they have a methodology. But their methodology has many akhtha, many mistakes, which go against kitab wa sunnah, and the faham and salaf of this ummah. Likewise, ikhwan and muslimin, the same. They have a methodology they follow in their da'wah with regards to uh, having an umbrella for all the groups uh, that everyone can fit under, except Ahlul Sunnah usually. Usually they have a, a, a very stern uh, dislike for Ahlul Sunnah and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. You won't hear them speaking bad about Sufi scholars really, but you'll hear them speak about Salafi scholars. Why? Because Salafi scholars aren't silent about their mistakes and their misguidance. So that group doesn't like that. That group wants to follow what they understand and what they want because they feel that that is the means to get to the ends, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They feel that. They do believe that, I believe. And that's why they follow that minaj. At least some of them do. Some of them are sincere about it. They believe through political uh, turmoil and uh, revolutions and all of these other aspects, political involvement, that they involve themselves with, they believe that that is a methodology, regardless if it is un-Islamic or they try to cloak it under Islam, then they believe that they're getting to the haq. But again, that divides the ummah. It divides when you have a secret bay'ah, as a quantum Muslimin, especially the, the ones who are very involved in the movement. The secret bay'ah divides you because you've made bay'ah to a, a particular leader. Your leader is not necessarily calling the Kitab wa Sunnah and the Faham uh, Salaf uh, this Ummah. So now you've divided your allegiances to your leader. It isn't to the main body of Muslims. If your leader goes against our Imam or, the, or one of the Mashaykh of Ahl Sunnah who's calling the Kitab wa Sunnah, you're going to take your leader because he has, you have the bay'ah to him. So much so that if it goes to bloodshed, you're willing to do that. And that shows us the hizbiya, the danger of being in groups and sects and where it can lead you. It can lead us to destruction, as the Sheikh mentioned, and it can lead a person to the, uh, the death of the person of Jahiliyyah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless our ulama, bless the ulama of Ahl Sunnah for making these things clear for us. And teaching us and leaving us this Torah, this inheritance of wealth, which is books, and explaining these books of the Salaf so that we, we have some sort of understanding and we can practice these things and we can follow the proper minhaj. Minhaj kitabillah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the faham of the Salaf of this ummah, that we, we can have that guidance, we can have direction. Ahl Sunnah has direction. Ahl Sunnah has work to do. But few of us take up that responsibility. May Allah forgive us all of our shortcomings and bless us with al nafid or skin taibu amalam mutakabinin. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.